Hey guys, so in the past I did a video called Copic Marker Alternatives and I covered some different marker brands that are out there and made a little chart showing how they stack up against each other and a lot of people were disappointed that I didn't do pro markers and I was actually going to do flex markers in that video but I couldn't find them and so they didn't end up making their way into that video but I decided I wanted to do a pro marker video in the future and it just so happened that Call Art, the company that makes these markers, actually sent me some. And this is not sponsored by them at all. They didn't even ask me to make a video. They just sent me the markers and this was a video I was already planning on making anyway. So I just wanted to say that as a little disclaimer and everything I say is still going to be my honest opinions as always. I should also mention that the Pro markers were previously Letraset Pro markers. They're now rebranded to Windsor and Newton Pro markers. They're the same and they're still owned by the same company. They've just rebranded. So there are actually four different kinds of markers. You have the Pro marker, the brush marker, the neon marker, and metallic marker. And I'll go over the differences real quick here. So with the Pro marker, you have a small bullet tip on one side, and the other side has a broad chisel tip. With the brush marker, as the name explicitly says, <laughs> it has a brush tip. And then the other side has a chisel tip, just like the one the Pro Marker has. Then with the neon and metallic markers, the neon ones are obviously bright neon colors, the metallic ones are metallic colors. And for the nibs, they have the small chisel on one side. And on the other side, they actually have this kind of nib. It's like a broad fine point nib which is actually really cool. So I thought that was a good combination just because I personally don't use chisel nibs and so I thought this was a cool option to have on these markers. The Pro Marker and Brush Marker are alcohol based just like a lot of other art markers like Prismacolors, Copics, etc. But I'm pretty sure the metallic markers and neon markers are not alcohol based because they eat through the paper and I'll do a demonstration on that and I couldn't find any information about them online like how many different colors are available or what the markers if it's water based or alcohol based I couldn't find that information about it so I don't know a whole lot but um, I'll do some demonstrations for you guys I also just wanted to show this case real quick because I thought it was super cool let's just fill it up with some markers here so it looks full um, it's really neat because it's fancy looking. <laughs> Here's what it looks like. That's the back actually. Here's the front. It says Windsor and Newton. You've got a little zipper pouch on the back and the entire thing zips shut and it has a little handle and when you open it up, this is what it looks like. As you saw, the markers get inserted into a little pouch and then there's an elastic band to hold them down. Plus this actually lifts and you can fold it in like this. And that is pretty handy, so this would be a good case to take on the go, and then your markers are all propped up. There is a big gap between them, which is kind of a space waster, but I don't know how you could get around that, but I kinda like it, because I can take all my extra markers that don't fit in here and just dump them in there. I have more right here too. Psh, I can dump them there, dump them there, but I'll, I'll keep them in here for now. So this might look familiar to you. This is my handy dandy chart that I made for my Copic Alternatives video. And I'm busting that out so we can, you can see the comparison and in information. My writing's a little hard to read because I was writing with a weird pen, but um, I'll just go over some of the details. And in the meantime, I'll cut in clips of me coloring with the markers. So when I went to the Windsor & Newton website, I was actually surprised to see that the markers were listed as the same price. They are listed as being $4.99 each, but a lot of times websites will sell cheaper than what the brand would normally sell for, and so I went to dickblick.com because they usually have amazing prices and I like to use that as sort of a basis when I'm comparing prices of different art supplies. And all these prices are in US dollars, by the way, just because it was easiest for me. I'm Canadian, but so many websites are in US dollars that that's what was easiest for me to go by. So on Dick Blick, the Pro Markers were $4.19 and Brush Markers are $4.49, so the Pro Markers actually were a bit cheaper, which is what I was expecting. I wasn't, even this is odd, I didn't expect them to be this close in price. And I think Pro Markers actually used to be less expensive before they got rebranded to Windsor & Newton. So 
there's that. <laughs> and then for the brush marker, there was a set of 12 listed, but no larger sets. Um, they might be available, but they weren't listed on the website. But when you do the math, it came out to 383 per marker. And then a set of 24 pro markers was listed on Dick Blick for about $66, which is 275 per marker. That's a steal of a deal because that even included the 24 set I got in that fancy wallet and that included pro markers brush markers metallic markers and the neon markers not just pro markers and so that's a great price especially because it comes with the case um but the that's actually cheaper it says the suggested retail price is a hundred dollars for it but on dick Blick it was 66 so that's what i'm going off of the big setback with these markers is that there aren't any refill inks available and you cannot replace the nibs so you use them and once it runs out of ink you chuck them out you can revive them a little bit with some rubbing alcohol i did a video about that i'll put the link in the video description but um basically it's not really good to refill your markers with alcohol but if it's a marker that you can't refill like there's no refills available for it i say why not refill it with some rubbing alcohol um, it will dilute the color, but you'll get a bit more use out of it before you have to chuck it in the trash. So, yeah, link in the description if you want a more detailed explanation on that. In terms of the ink quality, I think it is absolutely great. The colors are so vibrant and the color lays down so solidly. It is really, really nice. And I'm going to show you guys a little close-up. Here are some circular swatches. These two were done in Copic. This one was done with the Winsor Newton brush marker, and look closely at them. You can see little specks of white. It's not pure white, but it's lighter purple. You can see the light specks throughout here, but on, on this one, you can't see that. On both of these, you see the specks. The color is not completely solid, but on the Winsor Newton one, it is. And that just blew me away. I was like, wow, those, those are great inks. Here's the up-close comparison of these two drawings. This one was done with the Winsor Newton markers. This one was done with Copics. Uh, look at her skin. It's easier to see in slightly darker color, so look in the shadows of her face. You can see it's spotty. And then if you look on this one, it's more solid. So that is pretty significant in my opinion it does depend on the paper you use too because on some papers the spotting's more apparent and on other ones it's not this is the express it blending card which is the paper that the copic company sells and so this is what they're promoting to use their markers on and it's not really ideal i am going to be doing a paper types video in the future probably early 2016 so um, be sure to check back for that because I have that somewhat in the works. I've been testing these on different papers and stuff. And I did find that the spotting is different depending on the paper you use. But I, I just want to mention something real quick because I did get sent also some paper. The, it's Winsor & Newton Pro Marker branded paper and that's what this is. And look at the difference. These are both done with the exact same markers. They're both the Winsor & Newton markers and look at the color difference. It's so much more vibrant on this paper. So paper can be a huge factor in how your art is going to look, but there are other things at play and I'll mention that in the paper video. So I'm not gonna go into detail with that. I just wanted to let you know, you know, papers make a difference. <laughs> Now let's take a look at the way the marker is built, the way the caps and barrels are, and the way the nibs are. So on these, the barrels themselves are a little bit cheapy. They're the sort of cheap feeling plastic with a sticker stuck to it. Obviously that does not affect the quality of how your artwork is done, but it's just something I like to mention with these marker comparisons. One side does have this bullet cap and I, think it's a bit hard to pull off sometimes because the caps are stuck on there really well and because it's tapered your hand wants to slide down the taper it's much easier to grab a cap that is like this so that's just my opinion and the color names are written on this side the broad cap the flat ended cap if I can speak uh, but they're written a little bit teeny compared to say a Copic marker where 
it's written much larger and so it's easier to read and the whole time I was coloring I was struggling to see the colors that I wanted so it would be nice if it was written bigger but one thing I do like is it says brush right there so it lets you know that that one specifically is a brush marker and then the pro markers have just the color code the metallic ones have just a color swatch same with the neon ones uh, if you have the older pro markers this is what they look like the old letter set pro markers they don't have anything on the cap it's just plain like this it has a nice little stopper here to prevent it from rolling so that's nice because it is a round barrel I think that's all I really want to say about the actual barrel and caps and now I'm just gonna briefly do a demonstration about the nibs the nibs on these are super soft. They're softer than the Copic nibs and whether or not you like that is up to you. I also find that the nib grips the paper more than a Copic. Um, there's just more friction there. And so here, let me zoom in a little bit further. So if I start making a circle, take note of how much the nib bends and flexes while I'm doing this. And you won't be able to feel the friction that I feel, but just take my word for it. <laughs> So the nib is quite soft, squishy, spongy. Now let's compare that to a Copic marker. The nibs are stiffer, but they they mostly bend at the tip. Um, the more you use a marker, the more soft the nib will get. It'll soften over time, but you can see the difference here. It's just stiffer, doesn't bend as much. Um, I don't really know which I prefer, soft or firm. I do feel like in general, firmer is easier to use because when I'm using the little the little bullet nib on the pro markers, I don't like these little teeny nibs. I prefer brush markers because they're easier to blend with. But when I am using this kind of marker, I feel like I have a lot of control because it's a stiff nib. And so, I would say I like the Copic brush nib better, but really they're both good. In terms of blending, they do blend quite well, but like the ink itself blends well, but the nibs do play a huge role. Brush nibs are much easier to blend with than the little teeny bullet nibs. And that's why I greatly prefer the brush markers over the pro markers. And since they're basically the same price, it's kind of like, why would you go with the Pro Marker in the first place? Well, there are reasons. Um, some people just like don't like the brush nib as much. But also, the Pro Markers are actually available in more colors. The brush marker is only available in 72 colors, and that makes me so sad. And the Pro Markers are available in 148. And just to compare that to the Copic Sketch, the Copic Sketch is available in 358 colors. So you have a lot more selection with Copic, but these are still very, very nice. Like I said, the inks, I would even say the inks are better than Copic inks. I just wish they had more colors. I feel like the Pro Markers and Brush Markers are really lacking in really dark colors and really light colors. They have a lot of those really bright in-between colors, and I'll show you the ones that came in my set. This is obviously not all the colors that are available. I should probably zoom back out a little bit. <laughs> but I looked up their color swatches online, and I really thought that they could do with some more of the really pale colors and the really dark colors. Otherwise, it gets hard to shade and do highlights if you have a lot of mid-tones. Plus, depending on the kind of art you do, you might not always want the super bright colors. Sometimes you want the more dull colors. So that would be my criticism of the color selection. While we have this paper out, let me demonstrate the differences between the Brush and Pro Marker ink versus the metallic and neon ink. So here's a metallic marker. Everything's rolling away from me. Where did my neon marker go? Okay, here's my neon marker, and again, I, I couldn't find information about these online, but I feel like they must be water-based because if you go over the same area again, first of all, you can see the color is not flat and smooth. I'll probably zoom in a little bit to show that better. You can see it looks chunky, and it actually is eating up the paper, like bits of paper are sticking to the nib. Um, it's shredding the paper much like a water-based marker would, like Crayola markers. So I would say these neon ones act pretty much like a highlighter. There's nothing that special about them, but I think they're still a great addition because they could add really cool effects to your drawing. Just don't use them for layering and blending. 
Same thing with the metallic ones, great for adding neat accents or coloring in a solid area. If you're like, okay, I'm gonna color in this sword, I should use silver, not gold, but if you're quick about it and just do one quick layer, sure, you're good. But if you're gonna be layering and blending, you don't wanna be eating away at the paper. This marker feels a bit dry, actually. Let's bring out the silver one instead. Actually, let's use this side. I'm excited about this wide side. Woo! I love this nib so much. Look how metallic this is. I can color over anything. Oh, these are beautiful. Beautiful metallic markers. So, even though you wouldn't necessarily do a lot of layering with these, they're amazing. I'm gonna use these all the time for adding accents to my drawings. These, these are great. All right, so I'm gonna wrap this video up with just some of my final conclusions regarding these markers. Again, these Winsor Newton markers, I haven't owned them very long, so this is more of a first impressions, and I'm not gonna know more about them until I've used them a lot. And if you have used the, well, you wouldn't have used Winsor Newton, these are new, but if you've used the old Letraset Pro markers or Flex markers, feel free to give your opinions down below. Oh yeah, and one thing I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention, is that when I was, coloring my other pictures at one point when I took the cap off the marker the whole tip of the marker popped off so if you're someone who has used these markers a lot let me know if that's a common occurrence to be fair it was on one of these older letter set markers not on the Winsor and Newton markers but the barrels seem to be the exact same so I'm not sure okay that was a little bit of a tangent now going back to Copic versus brush marker um, if you look at my chart Copic Sketch is a little on the high end, and this is online pricing. If you go into a store, you're gonna be paying seven to eight dollars, sometimes even more for a marker. So they can get pretty pricey, but if you find the right online stores or get a great coupon, it can help you, but pricey, pricey. <laughs> Copic Chows, on the other hand, are much more affordable, and they have the same nibs and ink as Copic Sketch, so they're a great option. But let's say you're new to markers and you don't know if you really want to invest in Copics or not. Like, let's just kind of assume Chow doesn't exist. Because really, the Chows are just as affordable as any other alcohol-based marker. But um, maybe you're a beginner, you don't know if you want to invest into Copics right away or not. Then going with a cheaper marker is a good option. I just don't think that these are that much cheaper than Copics. Like, you're not really saving that much money. But again, it depends where you buy from, what kind of a coupon you can get that kind of thing, but yeah. So normally what I say is if you don't want to start with Copics, go with the cheaper marker and see if you like alcohol-based markers before making the plunge into Copics. But at the same time, Chows are just as affordable, so you, could, you can just go straight into Copics if you want to. It's really up to you. Um, in terms of ink, I gotta say, the Windsor and Newton markers win. I think they have nicer ink than Copics. They just need better color selection, in my opinion, to make it more worth it. And again, it would be nice if they were refillable and had replaceable nibs, because in the long run, if you use these markers for the rest of your life, you're gonna be paying more money uh, compared to if you used Copics for the rest of your life, because you can get refill bottles that cost a little bit more than the uh, the price of a marker and you can refill your marker at least 10 times and so cheaper in the long run cheaper in the short run so if you're not really sure if you're gonna be in the marker game in the long run go with something cheaper or maybe this is just your preference like like I said amazing ink and so I really liked the way this put down the super solid color I was extremely impressed I think these are fantastic markers and I'm gonna be using them a lot and um, since they're alcohol based you can mix them like if I want to use pro markers and Copics in the same drawing I can I also kept my Prisma colors so you'll be seeing more of those um, yeah so you'll be seeing more of these on my channel and I just want to give a final reminder about the paper video which will be up sometime early next year and that'll give you some more insights on marker usage and yes I think that's all I really need to say if I want to add any more information it'll be in the video description so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video so starting here we have a regular kneaded eraser we have two Prismacolor Col erase pencils there's blue and carmine, and then there is the 
Sakura Jelly Roll pen that you see me use a lot in my videos. It's just a white gel pen. Then there are markers, and this is 